Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Eco Hitch Hidden Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 Mini Cooper. So what's nice about this hitch is that most of it is actually going to be hidden behind our bumper here. Therefore, the only thing we're actually going to be able to see is the receiver tube, which is going to make for the most factory-like appearance. And the part we can see has a nice durable powder coated finish which is going to help it blend in with the vehicle well and it's also going to help protect it from rust and corrosion over time being that it is on the underside of our vehicle. So adding a hitch to your Mini Cooper is going to be a great idea because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use the trailer hitch for towing but if we want to hit the trails or if we need to free up some space inside the vehicle for those long car rides we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So if we are going to be towing, we need to keep in mind that our trailer hitch has a 1,000 pound gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. And it also has a 150 pound tongue weight rating, which is going to be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only. The vehicle may be rated lower, and if that's the case, that's the one we'll need to abide by. These figures can most commonly be found in your owner's manual. So in regards to bike rack and cargo carrier compatibility, so long as it has a one and a quarter inch shank, which is the standard size here for the smaller receiver tube opening, then we're not gonna have any issues. We have a great selection here at eTrailer to choose from. So if we take a closer look at the side of our receiver tube, we're gonna see our standard half inch diameter hitch pin hole. Keep in mind the hitch pinning clip is sold separately, but we'd really only need this for ball mounts because most bike racks and cargo carriers actually come with their own. And then on the bottom here, we have our safety chain tabs for towing. Those will easily accept both the smaller S-type as well as the larger clevis style. So now I got a couple measurements for you guys here. The first one I like to do for these lower ground clearance vehicles is the actual ground clearance from the hitch tube. If we measure from the ground to the bottom of the hitch, it's gonna be nine and a quarter inches. So I really don't see too many problems with that. The next thing we have, it's gonna help you when you're selecting your ball mount. That way you can get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. So if we measure from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be right at 11 inches. And then finally, we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. That's going to be two and a half inches, and that'll be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure while they're in the stowed position that they don't contact our bumper. So in regards to installation, yes, we do have to remove the rear bumper, but it's really not that hard at all. And we don't necessarily need a lot of complex specialized tools for this. Most basic hand tool sets will allow us to get the job done. Let's go ahead now and walk you through this entire process step by step. So the first step of our installation, we're actually gonna be removing our bumper cover. So in order to do that, along the bottom side here, we're gonna have several of these screws. We'll remove these all with an eight millimeter socket. Now, if we come inside one of our rear wheel wells here, we're gonna see we have another screw in there. We're just gonna be loosening these two. We have one on each side. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to be removing the taillights. Now before we do this, we're going to have this little chrome trim ring around the taillights we need to remove. So this is held in place with some plastic clips. We need to be very careful here because these things are quite flimsy. They're easy to break. But we're basically just going to be taking a plastic pry tool and just working our way around the outside of the ring here, trying to free up all those fasteners. So again, you just want to be very careful here. Take your time and slowly work yourself all the way around the trim ring. So now that we have that trim ring off, we're going to have three torque screws here. We'll remove those with a T20 Torx bit. And now we're gonna come inside the vehicle here. We're gonna have this little panel that we need to remove. It just simply pops out because then we can reach in there. We're gonna feel for the back of our tail light, 
we're going to be feeling for that connector which attaches to the wiring to the back of the tail light. So there's going to be a tab on the very back side of that connector. We'll simply depress that and then pull out. So there's what that tab looks like, a little bit closer view. So your tail light isn't going to come out completely yet. Once we have that wiring connector, we still have two little tabs here on the actual outside of the plastic of the tail light that hold it to the body. Now we're not really gonna be able to show you them because they're back in that pocket, but basically if you just use your hand there, just to feel around the outside edge of the tail light, you should eventually feel one of those clips and they're pretty easy to depress. There's that side out and then there'll be another over here as well. And then we can go ahead and remove the tail light. We'll simply just repeat those same few steps over on the other side. So once we get the taillights out, we're gonna have another torque screw here beneath the taillight, one on either side. So now we're gonna come outside to either edge of our bumper here. So we're just gonna be peeling back this little fender liner here. So we're gonna get our hands under there so we can release those clips. So once we get it partially peeled back, you're gonna see we have a connector here. We need to remove that. So we're gonna depress that tab and then just pull it straight out. And now we're gonna continue peeling back the fender here to about this point here, because then you're gonna see we have a little torque screw there. So we need to go ahead and remove that. So the taillight Torx fasteners were a T20 Torx bit. These are the last two ones we removed, these are a T25. So now we can go ahead and start peeling back our bumper fascia here. So directly below the taillight pockets, we're gonna need to get some sort of pry tool and just sneak that between that plastic panel there and the bumper cover to release those clips. So we'll need one hand to pull it off and then another to pry those clips loose. And now once we repeat that process on the other side, we should be able to free up our bumper. Now there's gonna be several electrical connectors on the inside, however, that we will need to remove entirely before we can actually completely remove the bumper. So these are actually for the reverse or backup sensors. In order to remove those, we're gonna to have to pull back on this gray locking tab, and then we should be able to depress them and pull them straight out. Now I think most of these models do come with these reverse sensors here, but if yours doesn't have it, it's obviously gonna make things a little bit easier. So there's no locking tab there on that center deflector there, or that reflector rather. We'll just work our way across. So now with all of our connectors removed, we'll go ahead and set our fascia aside. So now we're gonna remove our rear impact bar here. We have a nut on top and a nut on bottom on each side. We'll take an 18 millimeter socket and remove both of those. So now that we have all of our nuts off, we're gonna go ahead and just remove the impact bar by sliding it straight out. So now we need to do a little bit of wire management. So for our reverse sensors here, we need to remove these from these little plastic holders. We actually need to drape them up in the hatch here because we're gonna be trimming these little plastic keepers here in order to allow clearance. So then the same thing with the one on the other side as well. So basically it's just gonna be these two inside ones here because our hitch is gonna to mount to these bolts here, but we're gonna to have to trim out a section here to allow clearance of our cross tube. So we do need to trim both of these little plastic holders. So now we went ahead and just roughly marked out where we need to trim this little plastic piece here. So there's a guide in your instructions, but it's not super detailed. So I think we're just gonna take out where we think they want. And then we're gonna test fit our actual hitch to make sure we have enough material out. But if not, we can obviously just go back and take out some more. So we also wanna be sure that we're holding this wire up and out of place. You can even zip tie it if need be, so we don't cause any damage. 
But now we're gonna go ahead and just take a rotary tool here, just go ahead and make the required cuts. So here's how much we have trimmed. What we're gonna do next is, we're actually gonna be removing this little vent bracket here. So there's gonna be a nut on either side. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. And then we should just be able to pull this straight off. So here we have our hitch up into position. As you can see, see here, we're still hitting on these little plastic brackets here. So I just went ahead and made a mark with the actual hitch up into position to see how much further we need to trim. Now we'll go ahead and test fit our hitch again. So now we're gonna take our impact bar here. We'll simply reinstall it over the hitch. Now, if you didn't make note of which side goes up on your impact bar, there's gonna be a little label here in the center and you'll just simply wanna make sure that that's facing right side up. But then we'll go ahead and secure the impact bar and hitch with our factory hardware. And now we'll go ahead and snug up all of our fasteners and then we can torque everything to the specifications and in our instructions. So now we can't forget our backup sensors. We're gonna feed those down between the hitch and the impact bar. And we're gonna be securing these to the hitch using our provided zip ties. So the next thing we're gonna do is to trim our bumper fascia, just this bottom portion here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find two reference points on the outside of our bumper. And then we're gonna find the center point, which is what we have marked here. Then we're gonna to have to measure a few inches out on either side, and then as well as the top. But this is basically what our cutout's gonna look like. So now that I have it marked out, I'm gonna take our rotary tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and remove this material. So now that I have the material removed, I think I'm gonna come back with either a file or a razor blade. I'm gonna clean up all these rough edges. Once we have our fascia trimmed, we can go ahead and reinstall it in the reverse order that we removed it, along with all the existing components that we removed previously, such as the tail lights. So once we have our fascia back on, you may or may not need to trim the heat shield directly behind where the receiver tube sits. We're just gonna simply take out a nice square section but then once we have that, we'll go ahead and install the little trim ring here that comes in our kit around the cutout in our bumper fascia. And that'll do it for our look and installation of the Eco Hitch hidden trailer hitch here on our 2021 Mini Cooper.